Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. Governor Andy Bashir is holding a news conference right now on COVID-19. If you'd like to watch that, you can go to our website, WYMT.com, or you can uh, go, you won't be able to see it probably on our Facebook page because of the Facebook issues right now, but we are also uh, putting that on our second channel, Heroes and Icons. So HNI or WYMT.com, if you wanna see the governor's news conference, we are also monitoring that. Uh, for any major developments and we'll go to it if necessary. But first at four, less tax dollars for public services, fewer new businesses and expansions, and more people reliant on government assistance. These are some of the threats Kentuckians face if we do not confront the workforce participation crisis, according to researchers at the Kentucky Chamber Foundation. Kentucky has a workforce participation rate of about 56.3%, ranking 48 out of 50. The really alarming thing about Kentucky is that there is a significant gap. And he was going to say there is a significant gap between the United States and Kentucky. Low participation hurts more than the economy. Researchers at the Kentucky Chamber say that jobs are critical to everyone's well-being and the social fabric of the Commonwealth. WYMT Zach Hawk will take a look at the Kentucky Chamber Foundation's recommendations for addressing this crisis later tonight at 6. We've seen some peaks of sunshine today, but mostly cloudy skies have ruled the mountains as we've gone through the day today. Even a few showers in a few spots outside at our camera from the University of Virginia at Wise. Partly to mostly cloudy skies there. Still plenty of, day, uh, of uh, sunlight out there. Same thing into downtown Whitesburg, sitting at 78 at the moment. We take you now to our temperature map. Most of us in those middle to upper 70s at this point, unless you're getting in on a shower. Somerset sitting at 73. For the most part, we're mostly dry around the region. A couple of showers maybe up near Moorhead and up towards portions of Buchanan County, Virginia at this point. But at the moment, most of us are dry. We don't look to stay that way, though, all night. We have those scattered shower chances in the forecast, so you'll want to keep that WIMT weather app handy. We'll only fall into the 60s tonight for overnight lows as well. We still have plenty of shower chances on the way for the next few days, and I'll have the details on those coming up in just a little bit. Steve? All right, thank you, Evan. The Senate is set to begin debate this afternoon on an extension of the debt ceiling. President Biden says Congress needs to act now to raise the debt ceiling before the October 18th deadline when the country will run out of money to pay its bills. Senate Leader Chuck Schumer says he wants a bill on the president's desk by the end of the week. Republicans say they will not vote for it as long as Democrats are pushing for passage of a proposed $3.5 trillion spending bill. If this stuff passes, this massive spending and tax bill, that inflation is going to get much worse. The Democratic Social Spending Bill, as well as the $1.2 trillion bipartisan physical infrastructure bill, have put progressive Democrats and moderates at odds. Cleanup crews are scrambling to contain a massive 13-mile oil spill in Southern California's Surf City. At least 126,000 gallons of oil began pouring into the Pacific Ocean over the weekend from an underwater pipeline about four and a half miles offshore. It has forced beaches to close and wildlife is in danger. The worst of it is in the city of Huntington Beach, about 40 miles south of Los Angeles. The mayor says beaches could remain closed for weeks to months. COVID-19 shots, flu shots, childhood vaccines. Even if we know we need them, getting protected can be a pain, literally. Now researchers at UNC are developing a new technology that could make getting those vaccinations pain-free and without needles. CBS's Maggie Newland has more. For James Todd, vaccines come with anxiety. I'm not too fond of them. I actually have needle phobia. He's not alone. According to the CDC, as many as 25% of adults and many children have a fear of needles, some so severe it prevents them from getting vaccinated. But one day, needles, at least the ones we're used to, may not be necessary. It's pain-free and anxiety-free. Dr. Joseph DeSimone at Stanford University is working with researchers at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, on a tiny patch that can deliver vaccines when applied to the skin. 
And so our approach was to directly 3D print the microneedles and use a breakthrough in 3D printing that we pioneered. The microneedles on the patch are so small they can hardly be felt. Dr. DeSimone says not only is the patch painless, it's also more effective than traditional shots. We have 100 to 1,000 times more of the targeted immune cells in the dermis of our skin than we do in our muscle. That means each person would require a smaller amount of vaccine. It also wouldn't need to be kept as cold as vaccines that are used in liquid form. When you think about global access, you're going to need things like that. Right now, the patch is being tested on animals. Dr. DeSimone says the results are promising, and within five years, he says this could be how you get your shots. Or more specifically, how you could give yourself your shots. Maggie Newland, CBS News, Raleigh, North Carolina. Researchers are testing the COVID vaccine. They say this technology could be used for many types of vaccines against infectious diseases. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is urging caution for the upcoming holidays. To prevent COVID-19 outbreaks, the CDC is recommending people delay travel until they are fully vaccinated. The CDC says to ensure safety, celebrate the holidays virtually with people who live with you or outside at least six feet apart. If you're planning to attend an in-person party, the CDC says get vaccinated as soon as possible, wear masks indoors or in public if in an area of substantial or high transmission. The International Air Transport Association is forecasting that airlines will lose nearly $52 billion this year. The group also expects airlines to lose $11.5 billion next year before finally returning to profitability in 2023. The new report updates losses from 2020 higher to nearly $138 billion. That happened during the same year the federal government spent $25 billion bailing out airlines impacted by the pandemic. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said on Monday that Britain was aiming to produce clean power by 2035 as part of the country's goal of reaching net zero carbon emissions. Britain, which will host the COP26 climate summit next month, has committed to cut 78 percent of carbon emissions by 2035 in what Johnson says is the world's most ambitious climate change target. It would put the country on track to become a net zero emissions producer by 2050. Well, if you've not been on social media this afternoon, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp are experiencing a major outage going on several hours now. Some users cannot get onto the Facebook website. Instagram and WhatsApp are accessible, but they can't load new content or send messages. It's still unclear what caused the outage. Facebook says it is working as quickly as possible to get things back to normal. Well, the Johnson Central community gathered today to say goodbye to a man who died last week, but whose reach through the region is immeasurable. Coach Jim Matney's funeral was held today at Johnson Central High School in the gymnasium. Uh, we streamed the service live on WYMT.com earlier this afternoon. It uh, ended not long ago all the lives that he's touched and all the people that he's built up over the years and the communities and, and, and everything that he's done and everyone that he's touched over the years, it amazes me. A scholarship was set up for Matt and his sons in his memory. We will have much more from what's being called his grand farewell coming up tonight at 6. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Monday. The Dow closes down more than 322 points today. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. But straight ahead here on First at Four, a landmark drug trial started today in a federal courtroom in Cleveland. And the pattern looks like a summer one out there, but don't worry, it's still fall. I'll have the latest coming up.